The essence of String Studio is the modeling of the string itself, since that's the main sound source. Now, on the edit page, we can alter its properties here. I'm going to play you a part, and it's got a simple pad accompaniment, but listen to the guitar notes, and as I adjust the damping knob, you'll hear that as I increase it, it increases the amount of high frequencies in the actual vibration of the string. And as I go counterclockwise, it gets a kind of duller quality to it. So that's got to do with the highs in the actual vibrations. Now we can also track this value via the range of the notes that are being played on the keyboard. Now this part spans a wide range of notes. I have some low notes down low and then filling out the arpeggio up high. So as I increase this, you'll hear the sounds dampened in the lower range, but they'll still ring out in the higher range. <laughs> If I do the opposite, we'll hear the higher notes be duller and the lower notes have more of a full-bodied sound. Now, we also have decay time, and this controls the decaying of the vibrations. And this can also be modulated with key tracking. So for example, I'll dial this down a bit. And as I dial this lower here, the higher range notes will decay and the lower range notes will ring out. So you hear the lower notes ringing and this will be the opposite where the lower ones will be dampened and the higher ones will ring out. I've got to increase the actual decay time to begin with. So there's very high notes to ring out, and I'll increase this, and more of the high notes will ring, and the lower notes will stay truncated. I've switched to another sound to demonstrate the inharmonic knob. Now, basically, as we increase this, it detunes the partials towards the higher frequencies. So normally, when we dial up harmonics, we want the harmonics that are generated to be related to the fundamental pitch of the notes that are being played. This introduces inharmonic ones. And this is particularly useful when you're playing chords, particularly with a distortion type sound. It adds a kind of thickness, an almost chorusing type of effect, and it implies kind of density to the chord, and even sometimes a third. So in this case, I'm going to play you a C power chord with just C and G, and I'll play it like this, and you'll hear it'll sound as you would expect, and as I dial this up, it sort of suggests a thicker voicing. So little of it can be really nice. Now the partials are a little too detuned, but in moderation, this adds a nice thickness to the chords. That's the inharmonic knob. Now we have a release knob, and this is used to adjust the ratio between the decay time of the vibrating of the string when a note's pressed down and when it's released. So it's kind of a subtle effect here. We turn it up, to decrease the decay time of the note once it's released, but it maintains the decay time value as long as the note is held. So it's in relation to these. I'm going to switch to another preset to really demonstrate this more clearly. And I have another part here. And let me just show you what the part looks like. We're basically seeing a series of short quarter notes with spaces between the notes. 
So first thing I'm going to do is double click the key tracking to set them to neutral values so that that's not influencing anything. I'll play you this. And as I adjust the release, you'll hear it as I increase it, you'll hear the release of the note, the pull off, you'll hear it more. And as I decrease it, it's subtler and you don't hear the release of the string as much. So you hear the pull off a bit more as that's increased. And finally, the level knob controls how much signal is fed into the distortion module found here and into the effects section. <laughs> 